diğer konularını son dönemde hepimiz merak ediyoruz. Özellikle genç nesil bu konuya çok meraklı. Peki AR ve VR ile güven inşa edilir mi? Nasıl edilir? Doktor Raymond Love, AR ve VR ile güven inşa etme temalı konuşmasıyla karşımızda. everybody, my name is Raymond, I'll be your keynote speaker today. My topic will be about AR VR. With such technology, one day I could be giving this keynote virtually anywhere in the world, just like this. But the difference will be, I will not be personally sitting next to the beach, but I'll be somewhere else in my own office. But with such new technology, now we're going to talk about a new problem. How can we trust it when the boundary between the reality, the actual real part, and the virtual part are so seamless? Let's talk more about it. Let me get back home. Hi, guys. Well, I'm home now. I guess you can trust me on this one. So. Uh, to go back to the topic of trusting ARVR, I think it's worth mentioning one of the prior project, more like a social exper experiment I did uh, back in 15 years ago. Um, if you all remember, that time is basically the golden era of mobile computing, right? Everyone start getting phones on their hands. Uh, it's like a new technology. Uh, where people can take pictures, take videos, and it's always with them. So my project is called Cyber Logging. Um, the thesis were about what if I can turn all these devices into a lifelong kind of capture, but not only capturing, but also share instantly online with others. So imagine now when people have the phone, again, 15 years ago, you can take a picture and the other can see it instantly and and then a whole community can see that that was an interesting project because um uh it's the first time that we we see the big shift right um a sh big social shift uh with technology uh where people can now no longer bounded by physical location because if you think about two people now they can communicate anywhere at any time Officially, in some way, like say, how can I trust you in this location now? Instead of just like I'll call you, tell you, some people just literally take a picture, selfie, in the place in front of the wherever landmark, and share with the friends and say, "Come join me." That was a very powerful moment because um, that created worldwide adoption. The application that I was building in the master degree during my master degree. I mapped it out where the user are. Before I realized it, in less than a year, I have 30,000 users around the world, like in India, Africa, everywhere. And all this is because we provided one thing that's been lacking, right? It's the social interactions, right? And that bridging that gap is such a powerful thing to do. And let me show you a demo video of a younger me doing that. So again, it's a powerful system where you can share images. But beyond that, I start to realize something a little bit deeper. Is the collection of these images become a new evidence, right? Um, and it, and my professor coined this term called surveillance. You can think about oftentimes you get surveillance camera, sur is a French word from above, uh, watching from above and seeing you, right? But now with this tool I created, the Glogger, now you can capture from your perspective and share it. It creates a new balance of, let's say, if you ever get into argument, what's the truth? Now you have a way to balance it because both parties now can have the same recording 
and that way that the argument just disappear. You can just show what is the truth. And that new social norm, as we see today, um, is very, very profoundly changing the way we live today already. And if you look at from this drawing from my professor's daughter, this is the new way we live this world. Camera phone is the new evidence capturing device, period. But at that time when I was thinking about this, it almost related to AR VR today is that changing of the social norm by providing new technology to the hands of millions is a, such a profounding thing. With this wearable device, capturing devices, now people will start thinking about camera phone or this technology is not just a commercial device that people use for fun. It has multi-dimensional purposes. When we think about AR VR, we have that similar problem again. Again, camera phone, a new way to capture, receiving, sharing information. But AR VR is a new way to perceive and understand the information, or you can overlay and alternating the reality. So one of the best example I can give you today is the number of AR filters we've been using. When oftentimes people think about AR VR is only about the hardware, no, there's actually a set of technology that enabling such. One is in sport games, you see that overlay already that's been using for many, many years. But more recently on consumer's hand, one of the best use cases is the filter. You go on Snapchat, Facebook, you can now put funny things on your face, or you can make yourself look younger, older, prettier, however you like. And we've been sharing those information online. But is it okay to alter our look? It seems like there's no stop to it. Right now, if I put this baby filter on me, you think it's okay? It's just, I look younger, cute. It's, it went viral for this. But when we put this hands onto, let's say, similar technology, this is called deep fake is using AI and augmented reality or media reality. We just change the way how people look so that it looked like maybe Obama in this case and make him speak. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things. And all of a sudden people feel like, okay, this is not okay anymore. And where's the boundary? Where's the line that we draw here to say what is okay, what's not? And that's actually something that we should think very deep, very soon. And, and a problem that we face is we are now taking the actual physical space and putting landmarks on it. For example, Pokemon. People have been going around a couple of years ago to capture a virtual thing called Pokemon. It never exists, right? It is a virtual thing. But to capture that, they have to physically be at the location. And one of the problems they had to face were the location is someone else's house. And people, to get that, they have to try pass and get into someone's house to capture it. It sounds pretty ridiculous at that time. And there's no particular like ways we can govern how the technology were created at that time because it was generated by a computer. Of course, over time, they started removing those tags, but we're still doing this right now in, let's say, Google Map. We're still using a lot of dropping pins and landmark. But imagine this technology now is now on the hands of billions of people. Everyone can tag and label things. It can be very hard to control because there's not much of root behind this. And beyond just landmark, for example, I can use AR to overlay, let's say, and the art on top of someone else's work. And now I'll create a new problem. It's like, who owns it? For example, I have this video, I create this art. Then anyone can tell me who owns this piece of art now? Is it that simple? Why is it me? Is it him? Was it? And lastly, I think with AR, VR, XR, now people can have this kind of superpower they can actually may have these devices to just look at your face, identify it, get your background check, everything, right? 
Is that okay? Or not? Right. So that's sort of the problem that we're facing even today, contact tracing. The privacy issue will kick in, like, how can I prevent someone from retreating my information by looking at me? And that's already been like a huge debate. So for trust, I think it's a very multidimensional problem. Um, it's not something I can talk about in 10 minutes or five minutes. It's something that the whole industry got to work around with the scientists, entrepreneur, lawyers, governments, anyone that work in the domain have to work together to create this. The reason is we have to think about security. If the device is not secure, let's say it's always been hacked and compromised, how can we trust it? We have to think about privacy. Privacy is to protect others, right? Integrity, like, and work ethics, ethics. All this like components has to be worked out before we release something big to the market. And I think it will happen the same way like cell phone. This technology will be released to the world and changing the way we behave. And these kind of components will be worked out as iterative process. But I see that way ahead of the time. I felt like today is the first day I released a cell phone app. Uh, 15 years ago, now today, people say you don't have a camera phone, you look like you're missing out. Uh, same thing is happening in ALVR. The way we create trust, I think it's gonna make you win or make you lose from your customers or from the people using it because that's show a sign of respect because the powerfulness of this technology, again, you can alternate your reality, someone's reality as well. It's such a powerful thing that I think for the coming years, I think it's something we worth spending time and looking into. Again, my name is Raymond. We talk about trust today. Remember in the beginning, I was capturing a video at the beach. How can you tell that this is real? Think about it. Thank you very much. And follow me on Twitter. Thank you guys.